G'day legends, I hope you're all fantastic. We're checking out Firmware 9 for the FM3. There's also Firmware 8 for the FM9, which basically adds the same features in here. There's a bunch of updates to the amp modeling. There is a new FAS Stealth Blue amp model, which sounds incredible. I've just been jamming around on it while doing this video and noodling in that intro. So uh, I've put together a live preset that I'd be using with Ragdoll. I actually did a gig with the beta release on the FM9 with this amp. These are the same settings. I've just kind of scaled it down into a super simple FM3 preset on here where the multi-tap delay is kind of doing all the heavy lifting for the different effects that I need. We'll dive into that. Uh, a bunch of other updates and improvements. There is a new Mutron style envelope filter in the filter block, which we'll check out. I just kind of want to quickly look at this new amp in here and the Mutron. I'll do like a longer in-depth video on the FM9 in a couple of days when I get the chance where I can go through a bunch of the new features. Maybe we'll hear some of the amps in here as well because the amp modeling updates sound fantastic in my opinion. Anyway, this FAS Stealth Blue, this is how I've got it dialed in at the moment. Uh, pretty straightforward in here. I haven't touched any of the advanced parameters. I'm using my usual free cab IR. Check the video description if you want that one. A touch of the London plate reverb and of course some big greasy dual detune on here. Most of this stuff is available in my blocks library which is linked in the video description as well. So the straight up kind of chunky rhythm tone. I do have a preamp boost in here. Just a little bit of CC boost on there. Let's have a listen to the core rhythm tone drop C on this chillier Bell Aurora. I will hear it without the boost and then with it. That's so hairy, it's got hair on its hair. Switching over to the second scene in here, I'm switching to the second amp block. Everything is the same. I've just bumped the gain and the mid range up a little bit, backed off on the treble. And then in the multi tap delay, uh, this is kind of my standard lead thing in the multi tap delay. I'm using these first two delay lines with really short times and some chorus on them for a kind of widening effect, pretty subtle in there. And then we've got a dotted eighth note and a quarter note dual delay in there. Uh, this one, as we heard in the intro, sounds pretty mega. I've also got a wah on here, just using the Crybabe uh, attached to a Fractal EV1. Fairly straightforward. I've just brought the frequency max down to about 1400 hertz. So it sounds nice and fat. We get this. <laughs> third scene, I'm back to channel A on the amp block, but in the multi-tap delay, I've switched over to the quad parallel delay. The first two voices I'm not using, I've just got a dotted eighth note delay in there, but I've set this up with some time modulation on here and a 90 degree LFO phase offset. That way you're going to get these delays down the middle for the first repeat, then they'll sound super wide because of that modulation. And this is just kind of my standard uh, tap tempo rhythmic delay. <laughs> And then the same thing for the fourth scene. I like having like a big wobbly rotary style sound on there. I'm using the multi-tap again for that. You can see these first two delay lines. They just blended it a little bit, but delay three and four are doing the majority of the heavy lifting here. So short delay times cranked up, panned left and right. And then in the chorus, I'm using quite a high rate on them. I think this gets you a pretty good faux rotary sound. I use it for parts like this. <laughs>
this is a pretty addictive sounding amp model on here. I love it, a new FAS equipped model. Uh, the FAS amps are so great. Like if you just want a big chunky rhythm guitar sound, use the FAS Modern with a boost. It kind of does what most people would want out of a big chunky amp. The FAS Stealth Blue is great, the 6160, the FAS Trainwreck as well. So much good stuff happening in those models, really easy to overlook them. I should do a video in the not too distant future going through all of them. Uh, before we hear the Mutron thing though, let's just hear a couple of amps. I've got these presets in here. I've just called Rig where it's kind of like Amp Cab, maybe a multi-band compressor or something, but uh, the good old USA Mark IV lead mid- <laughs> Hundred twenty two oh three high. I've just got a bit of reverb on this one. This is such a great rock and roll amp. say 30 watt brilliant these are basically my favorite amps in here i don't know what type of vox they've modeled here but this is by far my favorite ac30 or vox derived amp in here with single coils you get this lovely chime uh, when you play with humbuckers you can get a lovely crunch as well <laughs> This Class A 30 watt brilliant, slap the vintage digital delay in front of it around 300 milliseconds and you get this. <laughs> of this tomfoolery let's get on to the Mutron model in here so this is in the filter block and you'll notice that the layout of the filter block has changed a little bit rather than just having a filter block with no effect types like the effect type selection used to be somewhere over here now it's where all the other effects are selected which makes a lot of sense to me so the envelope filter model is the one we want for the Mutron the attack and release times I think they're matched to the actual pedal on here but you can tweak them in here uh, let's hear the neck humbucker on this guitar and I'll show you how I like to dial this in but basically you've got a selector for either a low pass a band pass or a high pass a low pass is kind of a classic envelope filter thing you've got a peak control to control the resonance uh, basically the higher you turn this the more of that kind of silky swishy effect you get on there you can set the start and stop frequency they can be reverse as well if you want like a reverse filter in there you can play around with the sweep shape to take you from this start to stop in there and then we've got the sensitivity furthermore you can set this to various detector sources so either the block input or one of the inputs on the unit like if you wanted to place this 
after a drive or a compressor, you can still have it side chained to your clean guitar signal, which is pretty cool. So uh, this is the clean sound. What is it? The ODS 100 clean and one of my EVIRs in here, a bit of the Rich Hall reverb. So we'll hear the clean sound straight up and then we'll get funky. <laughs> settings on there are really fun. One cool thing you can do is set the detector source as input one, then you can place your filter after drives or compressors or any other effects in there, but still get the response from your picking dynamics in there. So uh, what's come up first? Let's just use this nobles whatever, and uh, we'll hear the difference between having the block input as a source and then input one. <laughs> thing to do this is to place it after something like a delay in parallel. So I've got a big greasy stereo lead delay happening here and I've set the detector source to input one. I'll change between block input and input one because these echoes are going to be feeding into the filter block. So they're going to be triggering the envelope filter in there if I've got this set to block in, but they won't be triggering it if I've set it to input one. So we'll start with input one. <laughs> You can get a more, let's say, natural decay out of it with block in set after something like a delay or a reverb if you wanted to have that, or you can have it sidechain to input one on there and get some really weird behavior on there. So it's really nice having those uh, sidechain capabilities in the envelope filter. I'll do a more in-depth tutorial with this one once I've had a bunch more time with it, but FM3 and FM9 users, you actually got the update before the Axe FX3, which is pretty cool. So keep your eyes out for the Axe 3 update as well. 
This is super solid. The amps sound amazing. There's a bunch of new features in there as always. And the best thing about these is they're totally free. And you also don't have to update if you already like your tones, you're out there gigging a bunch of times a week and your fractal unit sounds killer. Don't feel the pressure to update. I feel like when new toys come out, it's like, oh my God, I need to do it straight away. But uh, these things have sounded killer for years. They still sound killer, but we're getting all these new features added in there. So let me know what you think of the update in the comments section below. Any other questions, feel free to reach out. My Patreon and the music that I make with my band Ragdoll is linked in the video description. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. <laughs>